Hello friends, welcome to Creator King. Have you heard that all doctors recommend that you drink at least two liters of water a day? Well, today we'll heed their instructions with the first invention drinking enough water to get four blue caps. I hope we don't experience hyperhydration. With a soldering iron, make a hole in the center of each and every one of the caps, large enough for the motor pivots to fit through easily. Insert a cap into each pivot of the toy motor, which will function as the wheels of our motorized invention. Get some of the new super glue we're testing out to secure the caps in place. Put it all around. Apply also a little on the edge of the cap to close the wheels using another cap. Take one of our popular popsicle sticks and glue it to the bottom of the engine, creating a bridge between the two sets of wheels. Get a mini clothespin and super glue it a few inches from the end of the stick. Recycle a straw from the trash and cut a small piece this size of the clothespin so that it fits perfectly when you glue it on. Proceed to assemble the front tires using this long, thin wooden stick. To know how much we'll need to cut, put the stick through the straw and mark the unnecessary measurement before slicing it like a sausage. Prepare the two remaining caps by making the same hole with the soldering iron that we did in the first ones. Then insert the wooden stick with a bit more care than I show in the video. If your logic doesn't fail you, before you install the last tire, put the stick through the straw and secure it with plenty of glue. You should be able to turn it easily. Not even Lamborghinis have this power steering technology. Get a syringe for giants and remove the support. Make sure you block the opening with glue. Place a little more of this sticky substance on one side of the syringe and stick it on the popsicle stick. At last, a merciful soul among my subscribers told me what this strange electronic piece is for. They didn't tell me the name, but because of its function, we call it a voltage amplifier. We'll use this pair of thumbtacks for something more productive than putting them on your math teacher's seat. Attach the amplifier to the syringe and pierce through the plastic on each side with the tacks. That must have hurt Mrs. Syringe. This is a police car, but from Dubai. I'd be a cop just to be able to drive that beauty. Instead of dismantling the entire electrical circuit of the remote control car, this time, we'll extract the complete piece by cutting it with our circular saw like a piece of butter. With so many automotive parts, I feel like a mechanic, but only of sports cars, of course. The wires from the remote control car circuit will be connected to the motor plugs to generate that electrifying spark. Place the four batteries needed in the power box, close it, and with a bit of instant glue, stick it on top of everything. Do the same with the wire plate and put the piece of copper foil on top of all of it. Remove the black rubber from the syringe support. This will serve as a projectile. Spray a highly flammable substance into the body of the syringe and push the rubber piece inside. From your school project, get a badly cut piece of black foam. Cut a shape similar to a rectangle to cover our wheels. Attach it with super glue and cut some more small rectangles to glue them on the front wheels. Once it's ready and loaded, we can proceed to terrorize our friends with it. Launch the projectiles! Woe to him who unleashes the wrath of me and my invention, because he'll come out with a gigantic bruise. Here are the instructions on how to control our little toy tested against inert common objects on our channel. Because with such a launching force, I doubt that any living being would survive. You don't believe me? Look how even the inside of our invention catches fire. I don't know about you, but to me that's proof enough of its lethality. The following invention will raise the power of our scissors to the next level. To do this, we need to take advantage of the tension that these colorful rubber bands have. Fasten the first band by passing it between the two handles of the scissors with tweezers, then through itself to attach a wooden stick through the hole shown on the screen. We will do exactly the same thing a little higher above the first one with the second rubber band. Once we have the scissors tied up like this, get rid of the surplus by cutting it with sharp pliers, or if that fails, with giant gardening scissors. Ha ha ha! Julio, remember when I brought those scissors to sculpture class? After checking that it has good tension, put it aside momentarily to make way for the wooden stick, which we will sharpen to create our Neanderthal stake. Ooga chaka, ooga ooga. 
Get rid of all these leftovers from the wood and put this old-fashioned hunting object to good use. That tip would cut through even adamantium. Take the scissors again and superglue the stake to the plastic part of one of the handles. To make sure that this union is not separated by man, use yarn or white rope to tie it tightly with an indestructible Cherokee knot. Now we only need to create the activator of our bear trap with one more small piece of wood. Cut it with a saw and attach to some of the same thread. Hello, Mr. Yarn. I will cut a piece of you for my invention. Take the piece with one hand forming a loop and with two fingers of the other hand, hold it a little bit higher to create this knot. I told you guys that I was a scout when I was a kid. I never earned any badges, but I learned how to tie things together. Attach the wooden stick to two ends of the string and wrap it with strong adhesive tape. To finish and to be able to start our hunting season, place the stick with the thread between the two handles of the scissors. It will simply be a matter of waiting patiently for our prey and pulling the thread at just the right moment. We're only halfway through the video, so I recommend that you have a snack to give you enough energy for what's coming. Remove the cap from the container and pour it in a cup to enjoy it comfortably. Take out your thin roll of triple sheet cotton butt paper and wipe the inside of the Coke bottle so it doesn't get sticky. Make a central hole in the cap with the tool of your choice, big enough so that these strange pieces that all the clicky pins have inside can enter without problems. We recommend that you use a pen that no longer works because reassembling these pieces is more difficult than finding a cure for cancer. I have lost many pens for the same reason. Look for some straws in your favorite color, like this duck yellow. Cut a medium sized piece and super glue it under the cap. Once this piece is ready, close the bottle with it as tight as possible. Just as tight as how your grandma squeezes your chubby cheeks. Sorry, I've been a bit aggressive lately. With a sharp pair of scissors, create a hole in one side of the container to be able to connect a can of compressed air. I wonder why they're so expensive. It's only air. I mean, I know that clean air is scarce nowadays, but not enough for each can to cost more than five bucks. Cut a piece of tubing to connect a can of expensive air with the humble Coke container. Seal the connections with glue and find a professional hot glue dispenser. Fasten it, as well as the oxygen can underneath it all, with a couple of rounds of tape. Our liquid jet launcher is finished, and you are completely ready for the pool party. You only need to load it with the liquid of your choice. Here we do not judge those who want to fill it with their kidney water, but it would be better if you didn't. Tightly close the cap. Go out and have fun soaking people with kidney water. Not even Nerf's water pistol can squirt as hard as this, and this one is considerably cheaper. Pure marketing. If anyone is hot, I can personally come by to cool you off with a complimentary splash of water directly to the face. No one wimps. Today's last invention is something so sharp it could cut you just by looking at it. Take the sharp metals out of their bag and cut them in half to take advantage of both sides. Once divided, a romantic candle will appear at the snap of your fingers. We know you use some of these for your rituals where you pray that your crush notices you. Cut the aluminum casting like you see on the screen so that you only keep the circular base. It reminds me of the metallic paper in which the little chocolate coins are wrapped. Cut another one just like it and start applying super glue to the sharp metals at one end. Then glue them to the metal circles. Glue the second one the same way, but pointing away from the first one. To hold it together better, let's close the sharp sandwich by gluing the second circle on top. It looks quite similar to the world-famous shurikens used by ninjas in their epic battles during the Fourth Great Ninja War. What? Don't tell me nobody here watched Naruto. I'm the only otaku here? Too bad. In the hole that we have just created, insert this spiral motor pivot and secure it with lots of instant glue. It won't be long now until we can see how our high-quality circular rotary BIC certified saw cuts whatever you put in front of it with its two small blades. 
let's go on to create something else that we still need. With a box cutter, cut a piece of the Pringles can that you saw roll by a moment ago. This piece must be large enough to cover the sharp metal blades well, as it'll be in charge of making sure that we don't lose any fingers. Mark the part to remove from the can so that our invention can cut what we need without any problems. For this, we'll need small but powerful scissors that will easily cut through the cardboard and aluminum. Once we have this half can, position the rotary saw inside and cut the cardboard and aluminum out of the can. Devour all the candy inside the plastic tube and get the well-known electrical components on this channel. While I show them all on the screen, tell me what you'll ask the big belly and bread that brings us gifts every year for. I will try to ask him for something that won't cost him too much. Something humble like a PlayStation 5 or a Nintendo Switch Pokemon Edition. Of course, it's not very expensive. Besides, Julio has one. Why can't I? With all the components on the table, we will start to connect what will be responsible for everything going smoothly. One connection here, two connections there. The soldering iron will help us to solder each connection between the wires, including the ones that go to the motor. And while we're at it, the candy tube on the side of the base. Insert the clasp of your cables with a clasp. How redundant! Into the tube and pull it out the opposite side before securing it with super glue. With the box cutter, cut a slit in the side of the tubular container so that the switch has its place ready. Attach it with some glue. Do your thing with the motor and cut a small half circle so that it can fit. Connect the battery to the clasp on the base and you'll be ready to face any challenge that comes your way. As long as it involves cutting things, like this delicate sheet of paper, the cuts are perfectly irregular. At least it cuts and does it better than scissors, for sure. Poor paper. Thanks for watching our inventions made out of household items today. Follow my channel if you'd like to learn more about making simple yet incredible inventions. Also, click on the link to see more videos about my amazing inventions. Click on the link to subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any of my videos. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial.